Welcome to the Developing Leaders Impacting Kids podcast, a podcast all about sharing ideas, tips, and strategies to help you develop as a kid min leader. Thanks for listening to today's episode, featuring a favorite presentation from one of our training experiences. To download today's show notes or to learn more about our certification program, training intensives, and institutes of children's ministry, visit our website, cogop.org slash children. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the um, story of Elijah. And it's in your outline in your book a little bit of about this story. But it says there he sat under a broom tree. Now I'm not exactly sure what a broom tree is. One version of the Bible says a juniper tree, which that doesn't help me either because I don't know what that is. But he was beaten and battered and burned out. And after all the great victories and the shining moments of faith in this man's life, Elijah had had it. He wanted out. He couldn't see beyond, well, the broom tree. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. What brought Elijah to this point? He had experienced some of the most compelling ministry moments described in the Bible. Remember God holding back the rain until Elijah spoke? Or meeting the poor woman and seeing God provide unlimited oil and flour? He was used by God to raise this same woman's son from the dead. And then after three years in the desert waiting on God, he came back and went head to head with one of the most wicked kings ever to set foot on the earth. And that was Ahab along with his wife Jezebel. And then finally, a stunning victory over the prophets of Baal and an Olympian effort racing down a mountain had left Elijah running for his life. The enemy, in this case primarily Queen Jezebel, had had it with Elijah and they were out to get him. Elijah had finally come to a point of giving up. Just end it all here, God, was his pathetic plea. He was burned out on serving God. Have you ever been there? As a leader in children's ministry, sometimes we can get to the point where we just want to end it all. We may not want God to end our lives, but we start looking for a way out of our ministry lives. The enemy or sheer exhaustion has caught up with us and we feel isolated, like we're fighting the battle alone and we've been overwhelmed. Elijah said to God, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty, but I am the only one left. That was a lie of Satan. In this world we live in, it's not hard to feel burned out a lot. We live in a fast-paced world that, and a lot of times we just get overwhelmed with things and we do start having these symptoms of burnout. But we're going to talk about um, someone in the Bible that had indications of burnout, and that was David, a man after God's own heart. And this is in Psalms 22. He had a sense of distance from God when he said these words, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer by night and am not silent. And then he had a sense of diminished value. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by men and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. And a sense of dissipating energy. I am poured out like water and my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It has melted away within me. My strength has dried up like a pot's herd and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. So even David, the man that he was, experienced burnout in his life. Times of just feeling lost without God and not knowing what to do, overwhelmed. And there's lots of things that can contribute to um, ministry burnout. And they're listed on your um, outline there. But um, if you have felt these 
I want you to kind of just nod your head when I go through them. A sense of too much to do. <laughs> that means you've been overwhelmed. There's, a, there's an over word for every one of these I thought of last night when I was going over this lesson. So I added them. So a sense of too much to do is overwhelmed. Being ill-equipped to handle responsibilities, too many responsibilities, is overworked. Personal or family stresses is overstressed. Personality or relationship challenges, oversensitive. Do you ever have anybody that just really, you lost your patience, had trouble with patience with somebody in ministry and your and you just your personalities just didn't kind of get along and you became um, overstressed and oversensitive poor alignment of gifts and abilities overconfident in self God gives us gifts and abilities but he wants to work through us through those gifts and abilities he doesn't want us to be in ourselves Inability to say no. If you can't say no, then you're overbooked. <laughs> Physical health challenges. Your body is overloaded. And little or no support, then you are overextended. Anybody ever felt like that? Those things, all of them? All of them. We all have. I want to. Uh, there's a story that I want to tell you that happened to me, and this is um, just to illustrate that God knows when we feel burned out. And um, this was a good many years ago, but I was a vacation Bible school director. And how many of us ever directed Bible school? You know the work that goes into it. And by the end of the week, you're all these things. <laughs> you're overwhelmed. You're overtired. You know, and, and you just have given your all. And you're tired. And, and you just can feel all that on you. Well, I, you know, I had worked or directed the vacation Bible school and everything had went well and, and I had, you know, I'm a gift giver. I love to give gifts and, and so I recognized all my teachers and I gave gifts and, and um, told them how much I appreciated them and no one did that for me. No one said thank you or about how much they appreciated. Anybody ever been there? <laughs> Right, and how does it make you feel? Kind of like Elijah, that you're all alone and nobody cares. <laughs> yeah, overlooked, right? Another over, overlooked, yeah. And so, yeah, like you're not, you weren't worth nothing, he said, yeah. And it's not a good feeling, is it? But you know, God knows that when you feel like that. But I can remember praying and saying, God, would it have hurt for someone <laughs> to get me a dollar gift from the dollar store? And you know, that's childish. But when you're close to burnout, your emotions and feelings are not in control. And you feel that way. And so... You know, my feelings were hurt, so I prayed, God knew that. Well, the next day, didn't I get flowers in the mail from somebody from church? And it just said on the card, thanks for your hard work and dedication. And so I knew God had heard my prayer. But then, that, so that was, Friday was the last day of Bible school, and that was Saturday. But the person that sent me the flowers, I felt, didn't really count because it was my sister. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, I still felt bad. So the next day, I went to church, and unaware to me, a young man in the congregation went to my husband, who was the pastor. I'm 
have been a pastor's wife, and, and told him that he felt of the Lord that morning that the offering should go to me for all my hard work. And see, that's God. He knows when we're at the point of burnout, and he cares. No matter what we go through and what we face, all these feelings that you wrote on these pink papers, I have felt. And we're not alone in those feelings. And sometimes we feel like we're the only ones who have those feelings. But God knows our hearts. And I, he knew them before I even prayed them. I get, you know, he, he knows everything. But because I was just honest with him, which we might as well be honest with him, he honored that prayer. And, you know, and I didn't. That offering that they received was... A, a large offering, and I and I gave it back, you know, to to children's ministry. But the point was, it taught me a valuable lesson. That no matter how I feel, God wants me to be honest with Him and share it with Him, and He cares. And I and I share that a lot of times with our youth because God cares about the, not only the big things in our lives, but He cares about the little things. And that was a little thing. When, you know, your feelings get hurt because you weren't thanked. But God cares about the little things as well as the big things. And that's an important lesson that we all need to remember. That we all go have these feelings that we wrote on these papers. We're not alone ever. Someone in this room shares the same things that you go through or she goes through. And we need to uplift and encourage each other and, and let them know that we do understand what they're going through. But we're going to look now at um, some ways to get fired up. Let's get fired up. The first thing is focus on relationships. Relationships are what ministry is all about. First and foremost, our relationship with God. God is first, our family second, and ministry third. And ask yourself when you're feeling a little burned out, How's my relationship with God? Are you getting that necessary time in God's word? Are you spending time before him in prayer, sharing your heart and listening to his? And these are all the, what fired up stands for. So, A significant question you might ask is, am I making church attendance a priority? And too often in children's ministry, we don't get to spend the time in the worship service or other in the main worship service that we other other ones in our church does. So we need to take advantage of all the time that we can spend in our church services. But God needs to be put first in all things. But our family relationship is another high priority. And we can pour ourselves so much into our ministry that our home relations can suffer. And that's not what God wants. We, want, we must remember that our family is our first area of ministry concern. And while we may ask our family to make adjustments to accommodate our ministry to kids, we can't focus on our ministry to kids at the expense of our family. And finally, in regards to focusing on relationships, we must remember that our ministry with the kids is really all about relationships. And sometimes our sense of burnout can result from focusing too much on trying to make the kids do what we want them to do instead of investing in helping them to be what God wants them to be. And our most important ministry to our children is leading them into a relationship with Jesus Christ and helping them and discipling them and helping them to grow into what God wants them to be. And then we're going to do identify your calling. Why are you doing what you're doing? Anybody want to tell me why you're doing what you're doing? <laughs> Nobody is doing it right now. God told her that's what she's supposed to do. Anybody else? You love the children. A lot of people are in this because you feel sorry for someone who was, you know, desperate for a teacher of some kind, and so you just 
gave in and said, well, I'll do it. And, and for a season, that might be um, all right in insisting them in that area of great need, need. But over the long run, we need to be doing what God has called us to do. And that, or it will surely lead to burnout. And so, if you are called to be a children's minister, and you know within your heart that you are truly called, I want you to raise your hand. You know that you are called to be a children's minister. Yeah, that's great. It's a divine summons, isn't it? God called us. And that's going to be something that will last a lifetime. If you're truly called, it's something that you feel compelled to do, to be a part of, to accomplish, to commit to. And not doing it leaves a sense of dissatisfaction and incompletion. So we should have that sense of calling. God desires for us to have that sense of calling. And then we need to recognize our gifts and our abilities and our limitations. In much the same way as recognizing what God has called us to do, we must also recognize what we are gifted at. How many of you are gifted at something? All of you. God gave us all gifts. As a children's minister, my, you know, my gifts and abilities are, are in the areas of organization and uh, teaching children and ideas. I come up with ideas all the time, but um, I'm not gifted in the technical realm of things. Bubba had to come and set up my computer for me today. <laughs> I'm not good at all this new technology, but I'm gifted in other areas, and so... Someone tell me what you feel like your greatest gifting is. What has God gifted you at with? Organization. Okay. Worship. Creativity. I'm a giver. A giver. The worship and drama at Worship and drama. Okay. Someone else? Making them laugh. Making them laugh? <laughs> That's a gifting. <laughs> Anyone else? God gives us all gifts. And he wants us to use them for his glory. And if we do, in 1 Peter 4 and 10, it says, God has given gifts to each of you from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Manage them well so that God's spirit can flow through you and be used through those giftings. And align yourself up with others who have different giftings so that your ministry can be a complete gifting of the Holy Spirit and be used. And your ministry will grow because of your willingness to share in those giftings and and use others. And you will have a team, ministry team. Okay, exercise your mind and body. Physical exercise may profit us little in comparison to spiritual exercises, but it'll profit us us much in dealing with the everyday stresses of life. And make sure you have some plan to get get out and exercise. You know, you need to take a daily walk or visit the gym, or my favorite is to go shopping. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's for sure. (laughs) But we need to exercise our body some. It helps with stress, and uh, God wants us to take care of ourselves in all ways. And and mental and emotional well-being is very important to avoiding burnout as well. So exercising your mind through Bible reading or reading books or prayer and meditation and, and you know, just uh, keep on learning new things can lead to better emotional health. And God wants us to be healthy in our mind and our body. And then he wants us to develop our ministry skills. Growing yourself is essential to staying engaged with your ministry and avoiding burnout. We must depend on God to truly accomplish his purposes in our ministry. But simply knowing how to do what we are being asked to do relieves a great deal of stress and frustration. And there are many ways to grow and develop our ministry skills. 
points, and these include what you're doing here, attending ministry training events, investing in and reading resource books and materials, and not just those written about children's ministry, but, you know, in areas of communication or leadership or personal relationship, and subscribing to e-newsletters and, and mentor. We, uh, Sister Kathy taught a class this morning on mentoring, and that's a good way to grow and to mature in your ministry. And then understand the place of your ministry. Our ministry has a tremendously important place in our life, but it is not the only thing we ought to invest ourselves in. Besides taking care of other responsibilities, we also ought to allow time for fun and for other areas of interest and for relaxation. And then we want to pray. When Jesus got away from it all, what did he do? He found a place to be alone and prayed. Praying can do everything from help us vent, to share our frustrations with the Lord, to simply allow us to sit quietly. Prayer is the instrument God provides for us to have a two-way communication with the creator of the universe. Yet so often we don't do this, and especially when we get close to burnout. The Bible says to pray without ceasing, and when burnout gets near, then we cease to pray. But God wants to support us, and he wants to empower us to what he has called us to do. Isaiah 64 and 4 says, For since the world began, no ear has heard and no eye has seen a God like you who works for those who wait on him. God wants to work through every one of you, and one of the primary ways we can wait on him is through the avenue of prayer. So in the end, back to Elijah, our friend Elijah was a burnout survivor. As he came before the Lord, God revealed himself to Elijah and guided him to the next step in his ministry. And he blessed Elijah with an assistant, Elijah, which is another great way to avoid burnout. Find an assistant or better yet, surround yourself with a team. And as we serve God, he will pay close attention to us and we can stay fired up instead of burned out. Last year at um, ICM, I taught a class on uh, leading with passion. And in this class, I did a section on remembering. And it was about returning to Gilgal. And I don't know whether you're uh, familiar with that or not, but the Lord has brought this to my mind again, and I just want to share some of it. But remembering is very important to God, and forgetting is a tool of the enemy. And if you forget what God has called you to do or to be, you will lose heart, and you'll eventually lose your ministry strength, and you'll burn out. But God has given you all you need to do what he has called you to do in ministry. He has saved you through his precious son, Jesus Christ. He's given you the Holy Spirit to teach and to empower you. And he has led you in and out of experiences that teach you and provide you with certain gifts to help you do what he has called you to do more effectively. The only thing he won't do for any of you is to force you to follow him, to love him, to obey him, to honor him, to worship him with all your heart and soul and mind. That's your decision. And in Joshua chapter 4, God tells the Israelites to build a pile of stones at the place in which they crossed over the Jordan River into the promised land. And this pile of stones, there was 12 for each tribe of Israel, and God told them to make a pile and place it there and to come back to that pile of stones periodically and to remember what God had done for them to get them out of Egypt and bring them into the promised land. And they were to tell their children the whole story whenever they returned there. And if you read the Old Testament, you will see references to them returning to Gilgal before important battles and even after victories they would come back and Gilgal became a place of remembering remembering is a critical practice to God and he wants us to remember what he has done and where we are going and if I could give you one word of encouragement this has helped more than anything else in keeping burnout from coming close is to sit and remember what God has done for you Thanks for listening to today's episode. 
To download today's show notes or to learn more about our certification program, training intensives, and institutes of children's ministry, visit our website, cogop.org slash children. 